Okay, here we are back at the system dashboard. Now, again, we're configuring Fabric, and like I said, the configuration to be able to create these interface policies are going to be found under the Fabric tab under Access Policies, and we'll see here I have Switch Policies, Interface Policies. Now, we're going to go in and we're going to do the configuration for the interface policies. Now, you'll see the three subsections that I categorized, policies, policy groups, and profiles. Now, this interface overrides is going to be a way that I can actually, on a case-by-case -case basis, override behavior. It's a new feature that's been introduced to the system, and I'm not going to really do anything with it in the context of this class. It's also going to be important that when we come in and we take a look at policies, we're going to see all of the things that we can actually manipulate. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to, mod I'm going to create just a handful of policies. So as an example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a link level policy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it demo. Now, in your labs, you will actually be using your pod number for all of your policies. Now, let's let's be honest. Ordinarily, what I would do is I would create a set of policies that would be fabric wide. So if I wanted to come in here and create a policy that said I wanted to operate at 10 gig and I wanted auto negotiation to be on, I would actually just come in here and say it would be something like uh, 10 gig auto on or 10 gig auto. And what I, I would put that in there and then everyone can use it. But in this class, I want everybody to be able to make their own policy configurations so that they've at least uh, been able to go through and do the config. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a 10 gig policy for demo, the pod that I'm going to be using. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a 1 gig policy for demo. So I'll say demo 1 gig auto. Then what I'll do is I'll say auto negotiate on and then we'll just hit submit. So I've just created two link policies. One governing the behavior of a device operating at 10 gig. One governing the behavior of a device operating at uh, 1 gig. So we can see here, actually, I left the inherit in here. Let me modify that one gig just to demonstrate the fact that you can go back and you can modify things. So now if I look at the link level, I should see one that's hardwired at one gig, but auto negotiation is on. And I've got one that's hardwired at 10 gig and auto negotiation is on. Another area that I want to manipulate here just for the purposes of our walkthrough for our lab is going to be CDP. Now when I look at CDP, it's important to understand that if we could hit the default config here, notice DC, CDP, Cisco Discovery Protocol, is off by default. I'm going to make one that's going to change that. So what I'll do is I'll create one called demo CDP on. And then I'm going to click enable and hit submit and there I've created another interface policy. Uh, another value here is, is LLDP. Now by default LLDP is on in both receive and transmit mode. Now I could create any number of these and in fact in your lab I'm going to have you guys create one that's going to receive, one that's going to transmit, one that's going to receive and transmit and one that's going to have all of the features disabled. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here right click and create a policy for me called demos LLDP off and that's all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn both receive and transmit off. Again this is just a demonstration walkthrough. So in this instance I've configured a policy for CDP, I've configured policy for LLDP and I configured two link speed policies that I can use to apply to configurations. You can see here I can set up things for NetFlow, I could create a port channel configuration so by default what you'll notice is, is the port channeling is going to be static but what if I wanted to create an one that uses dynamic process. So I'll say demo, I'll say P port channel LACP. And then what I'll do is I'll come over here and say I want to use active. In fact, we'll say LACP active in the description. And what this will do is it'll give me the capability of being able to utilize link aggregation control protocol to form a port channel if I so chose. Minimum number of links one, maximum number of links 16. We'll go ahead and leave all of the default settings in here. And again, just giving you the illustration of how we would configure policy. We have lots of policies. I have layer two policies. Under the layer two policies, we can see whether or not we're going to support Q and Q, whether we're going to do reflective relay 802.1QBG, whether or 
or not we're going to or how we're going to deploy VLANs, either global scope or I can create port scopes. But again, all of this functionality, we're not going to explore all of it in this workshop because there's just simply not enough time. But at the end of the day, what I've selected here are some of the more commonly used ones. Another one that we might end up being able or needing to use in the configuration when it comes to port channels. So if I come over here and select port channel and I say create a port channel policy and we go through notice I have also the capability of being able to do things like Mac pinning. <coughs> Bearing in mind Mac pinning was introduced by the 1000V and again we may actually still have 1000Vs in our deployment but for the most part uh, 1000V and ASAV are falling out of favor simply because of VMware blocking the north facing API. The solution to that is another ACI application called the AVE, the ACI or the application centric infrastructure virtual edge switch. So what I've just done is I've created policies. Now I'm going to zip up this little policies folder and then we'll go down to the policy groups. Now in this you'll notice I have the capability of being able to define policies for spines and for leaves. Now the only interfaces that I have in my topology that are facing users are going to be leaf switches so that's where I'm going to do my configuration and you'll notice I hit the down arrow here or click on this box and you'll find that there is no default policy but you can see all of the things that I can actually come in here and assign as part of this policy group and this is going to be an interface policy group so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to just create one and what we'll do is in this instance we will I'm waiting for it to let me select there we go we'll call it demo after my pod and we will say uh, one gig CDP on LLDP off. All right, so to do this, I need to select the link level policy. That's going to be that 10 gig that I described. CDP, I want it to be on. And then when I come down here, I want LLDP to be off. So those are the requirements. But again, I could applied, have applied almost any of the other policies, or actually all of the other policies that we have in the system. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say I want to hit submit. Now I'm going to create another one. In this instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one that says we'll do demo one gig LLDP off. Actually, we'll just stick with the same sequence. So CDP on, LLDP off. So that means I'm going to do one gig this time. CDP on, LLDP off. And basically what I've done is I've created two policy groups that are going to govern the behavior of interfaces. But the question now is, is that what I've done basically is the equivalent of taking all of my profiles and link, I'm sorry, all of my policies and linking my policies into a single object. But next what I need to do is I need to tell the system how and where I want to apply these configurations. So what I'm going to do in this is I'm going to go down to profiles and you'll see again I have leaf profiles and spine profiles. The leaf profile is where I'm going to apply my policy group and then it's important to understand that I'm going to apply my policy group to interfaces. So when we look at this what I'm going to do is from policy I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a policy. Now this is going to be an interface policy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an interface pro, uh, profile. I keep saying policy. I'm sorry. It's an interface profile. And I'm going to call this interface profile. In fact, what I'll do is I'll say demo so it doesn't get confused with anybody else's. Demo interface profile. And I'm going to use this interface profile to apply to interfaces on switch 101. So it's going to be leaf 101. I could come even here and say leaf 101. And in, on this, I get to select the interfaces that I'm going to do the configuration on. Now, in this instance, on LEAF 101, I'm going to only apply this to one interface, and it's going to be the interface that I call Ethernet 1, and it will actually physically be Ethernet 1 slash 1 on this interface. It's not going to be connected to a fabric extender. However, you can see here I can actually assign an interface policy group. And in this instance, I want this to be a 10 gig CDP on LLDP off. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to hit submit. Now, 
I have two switches. So for me, I also want to make another config. So I'm going to go ahead and create one, and I'm going to call it interface. Actually, we'll say interface profile 102. Only I'm going to come in here and say demo. So again, we can keep things separate. And now I'm going to do a port selector here. We'll call this interface Ethernet 2. Now this is just a name. And I'm going to assign, because the way my lab is set up, 1 slash 2 will belong to me on this device. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the exact same configuration here. So in this instance, what I've done is I said I want interface 1, 2 to have this policy applied to it. I want interface 1, 1 to have this policy applied to it. But the thing is, is that until I select a switch to apply these policies to, what was going to end up happening is, is nothing has actually happened. So just to illustrate that point, let's take a look at the interfaces in question. So I'm going to connect to my APIC. Then I'm going to SSH to my leaf. So I'll say SSH to leaf 1. And then what I'm going to do is from the console here, I want to do a show CDP neighbors. Now what I've done is I've shut everything off. But you'll see here, CDP is not on. Even though I said that I wanted it to be on, but by default, LLDP is on. And what I've done is I've actually went into the system and I've configured it such that there's only one interface that's up and operational in the entire ACI topology on the 7K, that is chassis 1. And we can see here I'm connected to interface Ethernet 3.5. So if I wanted to just be more specific, I could let's see if I can say show CDP neighbor out of interface ethernet 1 1 and it oh, LLDP my bad let's see if it takes the syntax and notice here yes I'm connected to chassis 1 ACI lab now there are no configurations on this interface that let's see show run Can I conf actually I'm going to have to do it from the console from the ACI so first things first what I'm going to do is from here I'm going to say I want to go to configuration I want to attach to leaf 101 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say show run and we're going to take a look at the configurations and we see there's absolutely no configuration applied in fact I could actually say interface Ethernet 11 and if I do a show run here, all it's going to tell me is that I am con I'm on Leaf 101. So there is no configuration on this device. The other thing that I wanted to verify was is I wanted to be able to SSH to Leaf 2. And I want to look at Ethernet 1.2 on this switch. So when we take a look at the configuration, show LLDP neighbors out of Ethernet 1 slash 2, I left the E out, I said it but I didn't type it, and shortcuts can sometimes fry us. Notice I'm actually connected via Ethernet 1, 2 to Ethernet 3, 6 on chassis 2's VDC that is part of this lab. Now we'll actually have two VDCs, we'll have uh, lab 1 and lab 2 when I'm done, but right now I'm just doing this for the purposes of illustration. And if I say show CDP neighbors out that same interface, Ethernet 1 slash 2, we see that nothing is working. Now what I need to do is I need to be able to selectively apply these policies to these interfaces. So when I'm done, when I'm done, if I come in here and say show run for leaf 101, I want to be able to see output for the interface, Ethernet 11, that says CDP is enabled. When I come up here and I say show run leaf 102, I want to see output that's going to tell me that CDP is enabled on interface 1 slash 2. Now the only way to do that is going to continue the application such that I'm going to now take these interface policies that I applied in the interface profile and then what I want to do is I want to connect that interface profile or these interface profiles to my specific switches.
So with that being said, I'm Terry Vinson, and I'll see you guys in that lecture. And then what we'll do is we'll come back here to another demonstration.